Welcome to North Georgia News Now. I'm Beth Bird. Coming up today in local news, a Northwest Whitfield High School graduate has been recognized with some prestigious theater awards. Dalton High School graduate Bill Mayo is set to be inducted into the Georgia High School Football Hall of Fame. Former Dalton Mayor Jim Middleton has passed away, leaving behind a legacy of servanthood. And two high school seniors have been awarded with Soccertown USA scholarships. In state news, an invasive species of spiders has, been, has found their way to Georgia, and an adventurous Georgia hiker has been rescued after spending four days trapped on a volcanic mountain. Later, Shane Franks will be here to present the WDNN community calendar. But first, here is a look at your local weather. Today's local weather is brought to you by Built Well Bay. Welcome back to your local news. A Northwest Whitfield High School graduate is setting some impressive milestones in the world of theater. Scarlett Mumford, a graduating member of the school's drama department, was recently recognized for receiving the most musical theater scholarships by a single student. She loves performing and has been doing so since elementary school. Mumford got her start in Northwest Chorus and played supporting roles in musicals, but quickly advanced to lead roles such as the character of Alice in the school's bluegrass musical Bright Star. In addition to earning rave reviews, her performances have also helped Northwest Whitfield High School bring home victories in various competitions, including the Georgia High School Association One-Act Play Championship. Her impressive vocal performance helped Northwest repeat as champions in the Georgia High School Association Literary Meet, where she served as team captain. The Literary Meet features various artists, arts and literature events. Mumford performed as both a female soloist and as part of the ladies' trio. Josh Rubin, the school's fine arts chair, attributes Mumford's success to her tenacity and strong work ethic. Most kids love performing, but Scarlett loves to rehearse as well, he said. Applause can be a wonderful motivator, but her love of the work is what makes her stand out. In order to be considered for scholarships, students must write essays, gather recommendation letters, and demonstrate academic excellence. To date, Mumford scholarships total over $20,000 and include a Reinhardt University scholarship, the Reinhardt University Excellent Scholarship for Musical Theater, the Georgia Thespian Conference Theater Achievement Scholarship, the Dalton Little Theater Keith McDerris Musical Theater Scholarship, and the Jake Hargis Memorial Fine Arts Scholarship. Congratulations, Scarlett, on your impressive achievements. Bill Mayo, a 1981 graduate of Dalton High School, will soon be inducted into the Georgia High School Football Hall of Fame. Mayo's football career began at Dalton High under the leadership of then head coach Bill Chapel. He was a standout player, earning the Georgia Class 3A state selection honors during both his junior and senior year. Mayo was also named the Class 3A Lineman of the Year in 1980. In addition to being an exceptional football player, Mayo also had remarkable academic achievements, including being recognized as an academic All-American. After graduating high school, Mayo attended the University of Tennessee, where he served all four years as a starter. He started 46 out of 47 games, a record that remained unbroken for many years. He also earned the distinction of first team all SEC honors in 1983 and 1984, SEC Lineman of the Year in 1984, and NCAA Consensus All-American in 1984. After his playing days came to an end, Mayo dedicated the rest of his career to coaching other young athletes. He served as a graduate assistant coach at UTC. He spent nine years with the Dalton Parks and Recreation Department, followed by nine years at Dalton Middle School. He then went on to coach at his alma mater, Dalton High School, for 12 years where he helped shape the football program and served as an influential mentor to student athletes. Reflecting on his induction, Mayo said, I'm very honored to be included in the Hall of Fame and to represent Dalton High School. The Georgia High School Football Hall of Fame's 2024 class will be officially inducted in a ceremony on Saturday, October 26th at the College Football Hall of Fame in Atlanta. This year's selection process involved meticulous review and voting by the Hall's board members, ultimately recognizing 30 outstanding individuals from ver various eras of high school football. A former Dalton mayor is being remembered for his impact on the community. 
James Andrew Middleton, better known as Jim, was a businessman, former mayor, and a founding member of Dalton's Rockbridge Community Church. Middleton passed away last week at the age of 88. Middleton was born in Melrose Park, Illinois, but grew up in Tunnel Hill. He was a 1953 graduate of Dalton High School where he played football and baseball. After high school, Middleton went on to attend Georgia Tech and graduated from the University of Chattanooga with a business administration degree. He started his career at the business office manager at the Hamilton Medical Center and spent most of his career at Southern Binders Incorporated, a company that provided carpet sample books, displays, and binders that carpet salesmen showed to prospective customers. He also worked in insurance and finance. Much of Middleton's life was dedicated to passionately serving the local community. He served the citizens of Dalton in a variety of offices. Middleton began his servanthood as a member of the Civil Service Commission, now known as the Public Safety Commission. He had a decade-long stint in public office as a member of the City Council, and then spent 12 years from 1988 to 2000 as Mayor of Dalton. Those who know him best say he was a loyal and dedicated public servant. Mayor Middleton was a true advocate for the citizens of Dalton, said Mayor Annalise Sams. His legacy will continue to inspire those who strive to serve Dalton. Our city is most certainly a better place for having had the privilege of Jim Middleton's leadership, she stated. Middleton's support was instrumental to many projects and businesses in the area, including the Trade Center and the Parks and Recreation Department and Rockbridge Church. Middleton was committed to his faith. Founding the lead pastor of Dalton's Rockbridge Community Church, Matt Evans spoke highly of Middleton. To understand Jim, you have to understand his passionate faith in Jesus and deep belief in the Word of God, said Evans. He helped start Rockbridge because of those deep, abiding convictions. He genuinely believed that a church grounded in God's Word and committed to Jesus' gospel is the hope of the world. Middleton served as an elder, small group leader, and greeter for many years at Rockbridge. He will be missed in the community, but his tremendous legacy will live on. Our condolences go out to his family, including his wife of nearly 70 years. Two local high school students are the recipients of this year's Soccer Town USA scholarships. Soccer Town USA is a nonprofit organization that was founded last year and awards scholarships to college bound soccer players. This year's recipients are Northwest Whitfield High School's Matthew Molina and Emily Mesa of Dalton High School. Each student was presented with a $1,000 scholarship. Molina, who is wrapped up in his 2024 season with 17 goals and 8 assists in his position as midfielder, was named the region's 7-4-A Offensive Player of the Year. He received a scholarship to attend the University of North Georgia in Dahlonega. He will be joining the North Georgia Nighthawks in competition in NCAA's Division II. Mesa helped lead the Lady Catamounts to a region 7-5-A title this year. She is signed with Point University, a private college in West Point, Georgia. Soccertown handed out its first pair of scholarships last year to Southeast Whitfield High School graduates Leslie Alanis and Angel Garcia. Alanis attends Dalton State, while Garcia is at the University of North Georgia. When we return, I'll share some state news. Welcome back. An invasive species of spiders are on the move again in the United States. The brightly colored Joro spider is native to East Asia, but was first spotted in America back in 2013, after potentially being brought into the country via shipping containers. The arachnids have remained mostly in the southeast with their central population in Atlanta. However, researchers feel it is only a matter of time before they expand into more states, particularly in the north as they are better suited for colder climates. While the large spiders look horrifying, they pose little harm to humans. The spiders do have venom, but they are reluctant biters with small fangs that make it difficult for them to pierce human skin. According to Penn State University, they aren't generally known to have medically important bites. Their bites are equated to a bee sting, with the pain centralized to the bite area and then going away naturally. Pests such as fruit flies and tree borers are said to cause more harm to humans. While the Joro spider checks all the boxes for creating public hysteria, researchers are more concerned about the damage the invasive species could cause to crops and trees. Problems such as global trade and climate change make environments more comfortable to invasive species that otherwise wouldn't be able to survive, according to scientists. This is a global concern, said Hannah Borag, professor chair of the entomology department at Michigan State University. 
It makes all the things that we do in terms of human health harder to manage, she added. Scientists are still studying the spiders, but for now they say we should be able to coexist peacefully. Next, an Atlanta hiker says he is lucky to be alive after being rescued from a volcano in Guatemala. Zane Miliani of Gwinnett County is an outdoor enthusiast who loves adventure. His latest excursion took him to Antigua, Guatemala, where he and his friend planned to hike 13,000 feet to El Volcano Acatenango. The Strato Volcano is located close to the city of Antigua and is part of the mountain range of the Sierra Madre. While Iani and his friend got separated during the summit, and what was meant to be a wholesome vacation turned into four days of Waliani being lost in the jungle. Waliani said he sprained his ankle while trekking up the mountain range and fell approximately 400 feet off a cliff. For the next few days, he had to find for himself against the elements, sleeping in caves and drinking rainwater. Waliani said he found a dog which helped lead him back to civilization. The human canine duo shared a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and a couple of bananas that Waliani had packed for the trip. Helicopters, drones, canines, and local volunteers searched for four days with no sign of the missing man. Waliani said he stumbled onto a farmer's road where he miraculously ran into a police officer who helped guide him to safety and helped get him medical attention. Waliani, whose survival rate was less than 20%, cites his rescue as being nothing short of a miracle. I should have died on impact. I believe the miracles for the reason that I fell through so many trees and vines that broke my fall, he said. The worst I got out of it was a bruised kidney and a hurt shoulder. The dog was an angel in disguise. There are many things that could have gone sideways for me. It's truly a miracle I made it out. When we return, Shane Franks will share WGNN's community calendar. But first, here are the obituaries. Welcome back. It's time for WDNN's Community Calendar. Here are some things that are going on in your neck of the woods. The Creative Arts Guild, located at 520 West Wall Street, will host a workshop entitled Expressive Painting and Acrylics with Bradley Wilson on Friday, June 12th from 1230 to 330 p.m. In this course, students will practice the methods of expressive acrylic painting while exploring a variety of subject matter and receiving instructor feedback on the work. Sorry guys, this class is not suitable for beginners. Approaching painting as play will be emphasized while also focusing on solid technique and other important skills. Students will also be given monthly challenges for painting projects to work on at school and uh, bring in for critique. Students must provide their own materials. You must register for each workshop you would like to attend and it's $40 per workshop. For more information, visit www.creativeartsguild.org the Guild's Facebook, or call 706-278-0168 today. Keep your kids moving and exploring the great outdoors this summer with Well Kids and the Wild, a day camp program at Southern Adventist University. Each week-long session offers outdoor adventures facilitated by the university's adventure program staff. Activities include rock climbing, hiking, canoeing, ropes course, caving, rafting, and more. Where was this stuff whenever I was a kid? All we got to do was make log cabins out of popsicle sticks. The sessions will take place June 17th through the 21st, available for ages 10 through 16. Spots are limited, so don't wait. For fees and other information or to register, visit southern.edu slash wellkids. T.G. Shepard and Kelly Lang will be performing at the GEM Theater on Saturday, June 15th at 7 p.m., located at 114 North Wall Street. 
with 21 number one hit singles and ranked among the top 100 country artists. Singer and songwriter T.G. Shepard has a passion for music that makes his concerts a must-see experience. After a brief stint as a, re, uh, as a record as a record promoter, Shepard returned to his performer uh, roots in the 1970s and released his first hit, Devil in the Bottle. Since the 1990s, Shepard has been touring, bringing his unceasing energy and talent to the stage. Joining him on stage will be his wife, singer-songwriter Kelly Lang. Known for her extensive career in music writing songs for artists including Lori Morgan, Ricky Skaggs, and more. Tickets are $45 to $50 with reserved seating recommended. To purchase tickets or to learn more, go to www.calhoungmtheater.org today. Join Get Moving. Walk every other Tuesday for a group walk through the forest of Audubon Acres. Take a delightful bi-weekly stroll through the serene pathways. This is a leisurely walk designed for all ages, fitness, and levels. This isn't about speed or distance. Well, they shouldn't have called it the Audubon. It's about enjoying the fresh, out, the fresh air, engaging in light conversation, and embracing the beauty of our surroundings. Whether you're an avid walker or simply seeking a relaxing outing, this is the perfect opportunity to connect with neighbors and nature. Remember, comfortable shoes and a spirit of camaraderie are always a good thing and to join in the fun. The meeting will take place every other Tuesday beginning at 4.30 p.m. The location is at Audubon Acres Visitor Center. It's, uh, uh, the attire will be comfortable, and clo uh, comfortable clothing and footwear. Come join and take gentle strides, unwind, and foster a sense of community with every step. This event is free with no admission, no need to register beforehand. This will take place, rain or shine, bring the uh, significant weather. If any of you have any questions, please call 423-892-1499 for more information. If you'd like to submit information on your event for North Georgia News Now's community calendar, send an email to info at wdnntv.com. That's it today for this edition of North Georgia News Now. Be sure, uh, be sure to visit us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. Thanks for watching. God bless.